Number 10. The Oldest Weapons The oldest known weapons in the world are javelins, which are essentially spears made with carved stone tips for impaling. These super ancient weapons were recently discovered in Ethiopia and date back 280,000 years. The reason this could change history is that they predate the earliest known fossil of Homo sapiens, also known as human beings by roughly 80,000 years. Plus, these newly discovered weapons are at least 200,000 years older than any other similar weapons found. What this suggests is that our ancient ancestors, the species that predated our own, figured out how to make complex throwing projectiles. You could almost think of it like if monkeys started using weapons and fashioning knives. Sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie, like Planet of the Apes. That's how huge this discovery is. The stone tools were found on the site of a collapsed volcanic crater in Ethiopia's Rift Valley, an area which scientists believe was the original cradle of civilization. Between 125,000 and 780,000 years ago, the area would have been on the shores of a huge mega lake, where hippos and other wild animals congregated. According to National Geographic, the researchers found at least 141 obsidian artifacts here, all of which were spear tips. Before now, researchers thought Homo sapiens were the ones who learned how to use projectile weapons, but now it looks like they were being used for tens of thousands of years previously. The reason this is such an important discovery is that crafting projectiles empowered the first human hunters to strike from a distance, therefore giving us our first and most important advantage over other species. That stone javelin 280,000 years ago would turn a rock into a sling, an arrow, and eventually a bullet. Number 9. Neolithic History Scientists have discovered some unique artifacts in Papua New Guinea that could be rewriting the Neolithic history on the island. About 10,000 years before today, the climate on Earth changed. It became a lot easier to plant crops. This initiated a Neolithic revolution all across the globe. The ability to plant crops and stop being nomadic is what resulted in the first societies of Europe and Asia as people began staying in one area and farming. For a long time, scientists have been under the assumption that certain areas of the world never experienced this blossoming of society, such as Papua New Guinea. But new artifacts discovered are actually suggesting that the people here began to farm, craft tools, and partake in arts and crafts at the same time as the people in Europe and Asia. According to archaeologist Ben Shaw from the University of New South Wales, the local early cultures of Papua New Guinea planted a wide variety of crops, including yams and bananas. In 2016, researchers found a whole stash of amazing artifacts, including stone pestles, tools for lighting fires, and even a carved stone face. These artifacts are between 4,000 and 5,000 years old, suggesting there may have been a highly advanced island culture living on Papua New Guinea, which could have rivaled the earliest civilizations anywhere in Europe or Asia. It's not clear exactly what may have happened to this civilization, or where the rest of these artifacts are hidden, but this is definitely changing the way historians see the small, isolated island and its people. Number 8. Amazon Warrior Woman Researchers at a small museum inside of the University of Mississippi were shocked when they recently discovered the figure of an ancient Amazon woman painted on the side of a cylindrical box dating back 2,500 years. The box was once used for keeping cosmetics and jewelry. The image shows a female warrior on horseback, armed with a lasso, and a battle axe. The Amazon is fighting a Greek enemy soldier who tries to avoid the Amazon's attacks by ducking behind his shield. But what's really shocking about the image is that, according to scholar Adrian Mayer, it's the first ancient artistic image of an Amazon woman using a lasso in battle. It really makes you wonder where they got the idea for Wonder Woman and her lasso, right? Adrian also said that the image on the box gives some previously unknown information on the females of the day, as it suggests women enjoyed scenes in which powerful Amazons bested Greek warrior men. It could be that since the box was used probably to keep makeup, ancient Athenian women thought of themselves as Amazons in a way, as they prepared themselves for the arduous day to come. The image was painted on the box in Athens sometime between 480 and 450 BCE, but it has more serious implications than just supporting a positive self-image for women. It also means that whoever painted the picture 
was aware of the ancient Scythians and their warrior women who rode horses into battle and carried lassos. Number 7. Story of Goliath Ancient structures recently discovered by the Philistine city of Gath are changing the way experts and historians see the Bible, and specifically the story of Goliath. It now seems that the giant man may have indeed come from an even more giant city. This is because the remains of supersized structures and fortifications have been found in Gath during an archaeological project. Up until now, most of the excavations at Gath revealed artifacts only from between the 10th and 9th centuries BCE. But this newest excavation revealed a whole unexplored layer of the city dating back to the 11th century BCE, which fits perfectly with the biblical narrative that King to be David defeated the giant Goliath in that same century. Finding structures dating back to this time is important because it confirms the chronology of the kings of Israel and their descriptions in the Bible. And if David really did fight a giant enemy, he would have done so over 3,000 years ago when the city was a great and powerful capital with walls, tall structures, and a thriving population. Though, unfortunately, no giant skulls have been found just yet. If Goliath was truly a giant, as the story says, his remains have never been excavated. Number 6. The Hammer of Thor Thor's hammer goes much further back than the Marvel comics. In Norse mythology, Thor used his hammer to prevent the giants from destroying Asgard, where he and the other gods lived. The story of Thor and his hammer inspired the Vikings to wear runes and charms for protection. To date, researchers have found thousands of small amulets all over Viking territory. These amulets are known as Torshemer. But researchers, although they believed the amulets to be representations of Thor's hammer, were not 100% sure. It wasn't until just recently when archaeologists unearthed a Thor's hammer on a small Danish island that they got some much needed answers. The artifact was discovered on the Danish island of Lolland. What made it so unique was that it was found with an inscription that read Hamar X Is, which of course translated to, this is a hammer. There's no more doubt about it. The amulets were depictions of hammers. Even more fascinating is that according to Peter Pence with the National Museum of Denmark, the Vikings used these hammers for their protective powers. And then during the rise of Christianity, they began wearing hammers and crosses mixed together for double protection. Number 5. Egypt's Wetter Climate A mummified shrew found in Egypt has shed some light on what the country looked like just a few thousand years ago. The remains of the shrew were found at a burial site in Kiesna, inside the Falcon Necropolis. Over 2,000 years ago, the Egyptians were mummifying and preserving animals of all kinds inside the necropolis, shrews being just one example. But what's really amazing is that a lot of the animals here no longer exist in Egypt. According to Neil Woodman with the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, studying the mummies left behind in this place can show how the environment has changed and what its effects have been on the animals that used to live in Egypt. The shrew is only found today in moist places. This is an animal that does not like living in the desert. It prefers moist wetlands. But that explains why it was found in the necropolis. Scientists have suggested that 2,000 years ago, Egypt was significantly wetter than it is today. This means it hosted a more diversified portfolio of wildlife. It's not exactly clear how Egypt got so dry so quickly, or what animals may have had to do with it, but understanding that Egypt was actually a wetland and not a desert can help change people's false image of this ancient kingdom. Number 4. New Author of the Dead Sea Scrolls In one of the most shocking discoveries of 2021, a second author of the Dead Sea Scrolls has been discovered. The Dead Sea Scrolls, in case you didn't know, were found in the late 1940s in Israel and consist of over 900 manuscripts, the oldest remaining physical texts from the Hebrew Bible, dating back to between the 4th century BCE and the 2nd century AD. As you can probably imagine, the authors of the manuscripts did not leave their names on the scrolls. But it was kind of assumed that if somebody wrote one of the manuscripts, they did so themselves. But a new study using artificial intelligence has shown subtle differences in the handwriting of one of the scripts. It shows that it was written by at least two scribes, although their handwriting is so similar that it's impossible to tell the difference with the naked eye. What this means is that the scribes were probably receiving training at the exact same school or as part of some kind of secret cult. 
the newest discovery has opened up a universe of possibilities. Researchers are now closer to discovering why the Dead Sea Scrolls were written in the first place and who exactly was behind it. If these scribes were indeed trained to write the scrolls, just which secret organization trained them to do so? Do you have any theories on who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls? What do you think was behind them? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more intense videos. Number 3. Europeans in Alaska Archaeologists working in the Alaskan Arctic may have just discovered artifacts that predate Christopher Columbus arriving in the New World. This discovery is controversial and hasn't really been discussed in professional circles. This is because changing history is hard and nobody wants to rewrite the history books, even if that very history proves to be wrong. Here's the deal. Blue beads from Europe were recently found in Alaska. The beads are roughly the size of blueberries and were created in Venice, Italy during the 15th century. The beads would have been traded to the east, probably to somewhere in Central Asia along the Silk Road. But then things get weird. Somehow the beads would have continued going east, probably all the way to Beijing and then beyond across the Bering Strait to Alaska. There are a few issues with the story. Firstly, Elliot Blair from the University of Alabama says that Europeans weren't making beads like this before Christopher Columbus set sail in 1492. He says the glass beads wouldn't have been made until the 16th or 17th century. But despite this, even if the beads arrived in Alaska in the 17th century, they still predate European contact with the natives in Alaska. This suggests that it was actually the Asians living in eastern Russia who met the Alaskan indigenous people first and maybe even had a trade route established with them. Even if the glass beads didn't end up in Alaska until much later, native Siberians probably had contact with those living in North America far before Christopher Columbus ever showed up with his crew and brought such a massive change into the world. What do you think? Do you think that the Yupik people of Siberia might have known the Inuit of Alaska back in the 16th century? Number 2. Biblical Archaeology it's said that the Bible spans 1,400 years of real history. However, some have estimated the Bible actually goes back over 4,000 years. According to Professor Tom Meyer, the Bible and its mysteries can be unraveled by using archaeology. It turns out that archaeology and the Bible may go hand in hand. One of the most powerful examples of how archaeology can confirm the characters from the Bible came in 1933, when a British excavation in the ancient city of Jericho unveiled artifacts that may have belonged to King Eglon of Moab, described in the Book of Judges as the ruler of the Moab society, who teamed up with Ammon and Amalek to attack Israel. There are lots of figures in the Bible that nobody thinks really existed, and yet it seems archaeology is able to change our historical view of the people and events in the book. But what's really strange and more unexplainable than anything is how exactly the Bible was put together over such a long course of time. If the Bible really does span almost 2,000 years of history, who continued writing the book throughout all that time? Or if it was written to include 2,000 years of previous history, what ancient historian was able to track down all of that knowledge in a time when many places on the planet hardly had a system for writing? Unfortunately, this is something scientists can't figure out. What do you think? Number 1. African Coins According to the recorded history of Australia, the first foreigners to step foot on the continent were European. The first Dutchmen arrived in 1606, and then Captain James Cook claimed the continent in 1770 for the British Empire. But a couple of strange artifacts recently discovered may be flipping that history on its head. The coins were minted by an Islamic civilization no longer around today. The coins were commissioned by the ruler of ancient Kilwa in what is today Tanzania. They date back to the year 900, suggesting it may have been Arabs instead of Europeans who first stepped foot in Australia. Unfortunately, nobody has found the ruins of an ancient settlement or anything else to suggest early visitors. It could also be that sailors from Africa arrived in Australia, traded some coins to the local indigenous people, then vanished and never found their way back. We don't actually know for certain how the coins ended up on Australian soil, but experts are fairly positive that they were there way before anyone from Europe ever landed. Do you think archaeology can change history as we know it? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and come back again for another fantastic video.